China's high-speed rail expansion has been nothing short of remarkable. In just over a decade, it has built a network larger than all of the world's tracks put together. It started in 2008 with the opening of the Beijing to Tianjin line. Travel time slashed from 1.5 hours to just 30 minutes. Passengers were amazed by the speed and efficiency of this line. Word spread fast about this new transportation revolution, and people got engaged, with some of them saying that it's one of the reasons they'd visit China. Today, it's a true high-speed spiderweb with over 35,000 kilometers of track. That's over 75% of the world's total high-speed lines. China is just getting started, with plans to double its network in the next 15 years. Welcome back to Mega Constructions. The stretches of space between nations vary significantly. While China welcomed nearly 2 billion HSR passengers in 2019, the scale of infrastructure projects needed to connect its vast regions and huge population is unmatched and remains to be very hard to match. While other countries have faced major challenges in their own plans, building any major rail line involves complications around land acquisition, technology standards, funding models, and public support. These issues are magnified for projects spanning countries as large as the US or the UK. For example, HS2 in Britain is also intended to massively boost capacity and better interconnect its major cities. But planning began over a decade ago, and phase one won't be complete until the late 2020s at best. So China wins again, yes? It's four years, he's not gonna quit halfway through. Another example is California's HSR project, which has similarly faced delays, with the first segment from LA to San Francisco not expected until close to 2030 now. Again, China wins. It is happening again. With more than 800 million Chinese people getting lifted out of poverty between the years 2000 and 2018, over 47% of the population has risen to middle-class status. With city leaders seeing potential, new lines were launched that sliced through mountains and across rivers in China. Stations became gleaming with new hubs of economic activity. Real estate boomed as populations decentralized. By the middle of the last decade, over 100 cities were connected at speeds up to 350 km per hour while passengers enjoyed their drinks and Wi-Fi as scenery blurred by outside. The network morphed from an infrastructure project into a lifestyle symbol of China's rise of comfort and work ethic. The economic impact has been staggering, with new regions emerging as manufacturing and trade supercharges between cities, obviously, industries blossomed around stations. But China didn't stop after laying the first lines. They began rapidly spinning their high-speed railweb in short order, Shanghai, Wuhan, Chengdu, and numerous other major cities felt the transformative effects of swift, efficient connections. And while early trains relied on foreign partners, Chinese engineers studied hard and learned fast. It wasn't long before they started developing their own indigenous world-class technologies. One example is the inspiring Beijing to Guangzhou line. At over 2,000 kilometers in length, Yup, we're using the metric system now. It's longer than the distance from New York to Chicago. With that, passengers can now zip between two of China's largest metro areas in a single afternoon. But China had even bigger ambitions. The Beijing to Shanghai maglev rocketed past all rivals, floating above the tracks and accelerating up to a breathtaking speed force. The future of transportation was arriving right before people's eyes. The Maglev Line connecting Beijing and Shanghai represents the pinnacle of China's high-speed rail achievements so far. At over 600 km per hour, it holds the world record for the fastest operating commercial rail system. The trains use powerful electromagnets to levitate above the track, with no contact between the train and the rail. This allows them to encounter virtually no friction, reaching unprecedented velocities. Rather than traditional steel wheels, the maglev trains float on a magnetic cushion a few centimeters above the guiding track below. Onboard computers precisely control the magnet's strength 
thousands of times per second to maintain a buttery smooth ride. The track features extraordinary precision, sculpted into the landscape along a carefully surveyed path. Even the tiniest unliveliness could destabilize the train's delicate magnetic field. To maximize safety at such warp speeds, the trains feature aerodynamic casing and advanced collision avoidance systems. Stations had to be designed from the ground up to absorb the forces of pulling in and accelerating massive loads. What's most impressive is that the maglev's potential is still not fully unlocked. Future generations may double today's top speed while expending minimal additional energy. But China's crowning achievement so far? It's obviously the S-shaped maglev in Shanghai that gracefully glides through the air, breaking ground as humanity's first commercially operating high-speed maglev system. Chinese engineers have truly become the vanguard in pushing rail technology to new frontiers. As of 2021, China's high-speed rail network stretches for 37,900 kilometers, while its entire rail track length runs for over 141,000 kilometers. By 2035, the high-speed network will have grown to 70,000 kilometers, and the total rail length will extend over 200,000 kilometers. But China's bullet trains haven't just whisked travelers between bustling metropolises. They've helped spread opportunity across the vast landscape. Studies show tourism booming by 20% or more in provinces connecting to the network. Far from the wealthy coastal enclaves, inland populations saw a chance for renewed prosperity. As stations anchored emerging hubs, factories and entrepreneurs flocked to once isolated towns. With Shanghai and Beijing previously quadrupling, or more in income, leaders saw an imbalance. Bullet trains presented a means to spur investment in lagging regions. By stimulating local economies, the gap could begin closing. Passengers experience a new interconnection, forging relationships across vast distances. University students from poorer areas now access jobs and education previously unattainable. Both businesses and families gain unprecedented mobility within China's shifting geography. As the network doubles its span, the ripple effects continue spreading. Small cities gain visibility and visitors, translating to fresh demand. Even remote farming villages feel uplifted as their produce reaches new consumers. But the real question is, how has China built such a massive high-speed rail network while other countries have been left standing? The first reason is demand. The US has eight cities with more than five million people. India has seven, Japan has three, and the UK has just one. China has a staggering 14 cities. The Shanghai to Beijing line alone serves more than 300 million people. This unprecedented rate of urbanization combined with rising household incomes creates a need for the fast delivery of people and goods across the country. The second reason to motivate China you only get 24 hours and I blew up literally is their heavily congested airspace that often causes flight delays. And high-speed rails are not only cheaper, but hugely more reliable. The high levels of demand allow the Chinese government to make massive investments in high-speed technology and infrastructure. And the third reason is that the country has also standardized nearly every aspect of construction. Tracks, viaducts, electrification, signaling, and communication systems are all the same, no matter where you are in the country. This lowers construction costs, enables off-site manufacturing, and cuts build times. In Europe, high-speed rail costs around $25 million to $39 million per kilometer, while in the U.S. it totals around $56 million. In China, it's down at $17 million, up to two-thirds lower than other countries. So, China discovered with trains came everything, including trade. With trade came transformation and shared prosperity. Its high-speed infrastructure helps engineer a more equitable sharing of progress nationwide. Technologically, China continues pushing the limits with next-generation train designs. Maglev projects are exploring to one day operate at speeds up to 1,000 kilometers per hour. Novel train body materials, maglev options, and ultra-efficient power systems seek to slash emissions. Digital technologies will enhance the passenger experience too. More lines will feature 5G, allowing, allowing uninterrupted work and entertainment on board. 
AI and big data can optimize routing, pricing, and maintenance based on rider behaviors. Financing remains a challenge, as returns may be slower for low-density routes. However, land value capture around stations and taxation on railway-enabled growth can recoup costs over the long run. If China overcomes funding hurdles and perfects construction techniques, it may eventually export its rail technologies globally. This could help other nations solve their own infrastructure needs in an affordable, standardized way. But if you ask me, I'll tell you that the best part of China's high-speed train is you can order food from any of the restaurants in the station on your phone and designate at what time during which stop to have it delivered to you. During the two to three minute stop, your food is already there waiting to be distributed to you on the train. So yeah, China is changing many of our paradigms with hard facts over the table, no matter how much some people try to demonize them for any reason. They work hard and it shows, and this is why they deserve success. Their work keeps getting proven to be the best day by day. Though high-speed rail may seem out of reach to many, the current economic crisis around the world could be an opportunity for others to try to imitate. But keep in mind, you will never beat China. That is everything for now. What do you think about China's work ethic? Would you like to see these magnificent trains in other countries as well? Please let us know what you think in the comments below. And if you haven't, please subscribe and leave a like for this video. Your support helps us continue our work. Thanks again for your support, and I will see you in the next one.